Settling into a survival world, you will need to perform reconnaissance and survey your surroundings. This will allow you to quickly identify ore patches, enemy bases, economy stations and more. In this page of the Space Engineer's Handbook, we will be discussing how to plan, build and utilise early game scouting craft. If you've not seen any of my other videos, it's worth mentioning that as a general rule, I prefer to balance visuals and functionality in a vessel. I respect those who prefer to lean either way, but I personally find the most enjoyment in Space Engineers through building something visually appealing as well as functional. In this guide, I'll be talking through how to best go about designing, building and implementing an early game scouting craft. While you can build in survival, often it can be beneficial to hop into a creative world for designing, testing and iterating on ships. You can make tweaks in survival as you go along, but beginning the process in creative will save much time. When building a small grid in survival from a blueprint, find or construct a flat surface on which to build. Then place a small grid landing gear, on this place a small grid battery, a control panel and a projector. Insert the blueprint and play with the rotation and position until it's just in front of the projector, then add a couple blocks so it connects. When building small ships for survival, I generally follow a uniform criteria so that all my vessels can be used with creations. This is fitting onto a 3x3 large block landing pad and having the primary connector on the underside of the craft. For this example, I'll be building a small scout craft for the Earth-like planet. I typically start with the largest components of the craft, then build the bodywork around this. First, consider the component and conveyor flow required for your craft. To save conveyors, try to utilise as many built-in ports as possible. What I mean by this is consider the existing ports on blocks such as cockpits, cargo containers and other systems. Linking these directly will save trying to make external pipework fit into the looks you're going for, as well as ultimately saving on resources. This is especially relevant if you're building a hydrogen craft, as all the thrusters will need to have conveyor connections. A side note for hydrogen, an O2 generator on its own can fuel a couple hydrogen thrusters if you just want to add boosters. For my starting craft, I will generally always make them battery powered and recharge them at the base between uses. However, if you've managed to find some quick uranium, a small reactor can make things much easier. A hydrogen engine is also a great way to cheaply charge up the batteries of your craft. I would use this in the power cycle configuration I touched on in the early base design guide. For this craft, I'll be going with battery power, with atmospheric thrust and a couple of hydrogen boosters to get us out of tricky situations quickly. Atmospheric thrusters are a great starting type. They don't require fuel, provide good thrust and are efficient. The downside is they require lots of motors to build, so ensure you have a good nickel supply. You'll also need cobble for the metal grids. Atmospheric thrusters require clearance on the air intake, meaning the mounting points are on the sides of the thrusters. They are also power vacuums, ensure you have enough battery power by simultaneously firing 3 to 4 of the axis of thrust and checking power for overload. It's a good idea to have some play in this, Aim for 80% max use, just in case you need to add some extra systems later on. Also, friendly reminder to add a gyroscope. Next, let's consider subsystems we may need to maximise our scouting capabilities. This will depend massively on how you implement your ship into the game. An antenna or beacon will allow you to keep track of your ship, or use a remote control if you wish. But honestly, if you're early game and won't be straying too far on foot, it's actually not necessary. Ore detectors are a great addition. When scouting, looking for ore is a large part of mapping new territory, so I would almost always recommend one. A spotlight in some form is extremely useful for navigating in the dark, 
or if you find yourself in a storm. They are great for investigating wrecks or territory. Landing gear can be useful if the bottom of your ship doesn't have a flat profile, or to cushion landings and stabilise once on the ground. Weaponry is not always needed, but I usually arm my scouts with light guns just in case. A single Gatling gun or auto cannon usually does the trick, but this will depend on the hostility of your environment. PvP players may wish to up arm scouting craft to double as interceptors. And finally, a projector is a great addition in case the craft suffers any damage. You're able to repair it to its original state. Armour is once again subject to your game environment. As a minimum, I would recommend wrapping critical areas or weak points in light armour. Failing so can result in, well, this. Oh wait, it's fallen as well. Oh shit. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no! Small grid light armour literally costs one steel plate so it's very cheap to give a little extra protection, even just from bumps and scrapes. The next step is having heavy armour in places likely to be shot at. Heavy armour is much better against weaponry. I usually add this as a minimum around the cockpit, but reinforcing other areas is also a good idea. Now, let's take a look at improving the visual appeal of the ship making it look more filled out and complete. This will depend on how you've gone about building your craft and its size, shape, as well as many more variables. Due to this, I will go over some basic design choices to start you off with. Firstly, bulk out your ship. Add armor where it makes sense to your eyes from a real world perspective, as well as protecting your ship better. This will give us a base to add more details to work with. Try to avoid flat edges and dead ends when placing blocks. Use slopes and curves to make the body of the craft flow better. From here, it can be useful to begin painting the ship. This will help you get an idea of where to add features such as spaced armour, fins and ground down blocks. And don't forget the underside. Many times people build ships in atmosphere or on planets, even in space, and forget to look at the underside of the craft. Give it as much attention as the top. This applies in the real world and space engineers. Just so you know. Now we have a functional, flushed out scouting ship, but we aren't done yet. Let's go through the final phase of iterating on the design and adding greeble and detail. Here is a simple example of a fin setup you can use. It's a small detail, but does a lot for the overall shape and feel the craft gives. Here's a spaced armour example. Ground down blocks with panels work a treat for a simple way to add more detail and armour to your ships. Ground down blast doors are a time tested way to add detail. You can use them to give the look of a reinforced area or a structural beam. Piston heads are a builder's best friend. You can use them to make conveyors or dead ends look more detailed and less abrupt. You can also use functional blocks to add detail. Some kick up about this, but personally it's never bothered me. Gyros are extremely durable and are a great for additional exterior armour and detail. Small batteries also have a nice texture and lighting setup. And finally, a couple optional features I like to add to make ships a bit more complete. Customising the cockpit LCDs to fit with the colour scheme of the vessel and faction. Rear lights, set with low range and intensity to the colour red. A forward light to signal the front of the vessel. A blinker on the top to make the ship easier to spot in the dark. A cargo container facing outwards for easy inventory access when on the ground. Of course, there are many more features and elements to a scouting ship to be discussed, but through the steps and processes on this page of the Space Engineer's Handbook, we have created an effective blend of form and function to serve you through survival. And that wraps up the scouting vessel page of the Space Engineer's Handbook. Leave suggestions for the next pages in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. And as always, take care, everybody.